started here. Uh, this is the 2020, I can't hear either, 2020, 2020 edition of Hiller Swimming. I can't hear you. And we're having some technical difficulties as we, nobody can hear, you can't hear either, right? Can you hear anything, Raj? All right, so we're going to videotape right now. We are not sure whether or not anybody could hear us. So we try to figure out whether or not we are on. Technical difficulties. No. And yeah, I can't hear you either. You can. And you can't hear anything either, can you? All right. Well, you know what? We're going to pretend. Something back here for volumes. I've done this before. Hello, no, that's not it. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Oh, I heard something. Oh, I heard you. You heard me? Yeah, a little bit. You can hear me, okay. I did a minute ago. Go again. Hear me No. I did for a minute. I hear you or no? No, nope, I can't hear anybody. Hello. Hmm. Yeah, let's try that. Hello. Nope. Test. Hello. Hello. It's recording you. Hello. Hmm. 
All right, well, you know what we're going to end up doing is we're going to video without any sound. It's all turned on. Everything's on, everything's plugged in. Huh. Well, you know what? We're going to video tape. You know, and then I'll check in with them. So why don't we just, we'll just video tape this one. Test. Oh, there we go. This cable. Okay. Oh, I just lost you. There we go. Oh, I, I think we're back. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Well, All right. after some technical difficulties, we finally have some announcing. So welcome to the 2020 <coughs> version of Hopkinton Hillers Swimming. We're here at Keith Tech. This is Kevin Legassi. Alongside of me is Eve Weatherid, the younger sister of a uh, sophomore diver, correct? Yeah, Tess Weatherhead. Tess Weatherhead. And Roger Jonigan is up on the camera. <coughs> so we've got a new face, a young new face in the crowd tonight. So she's going to help out a little bit with the announcing, have a little bit of fun. Generally, she's behind the camera. We put her out in front. We're going to put her on the spot tonight. <laughs> Roger's been behind the camera. Going to train some new folks because... Um, this will be this will be my final year. Raj has got a senior as well, so final year for the two of us as we get a couple more people up here. So what we're going to do is um, <coughs> we're going to get to the um, caught up on the meet here for a minute, and then what we're going to do is give you a quick uh, heads up as to where we are in this season, young season for the Hillers. So, Eve, here's what I want you to do. This is the 200 freestyle, if you don't mind. All right. right across. Give me an idea who's swimming. 200 freestyle, Taylor Hallboro. Tyler. Tyler, yep, sorry. Lane two. Uh, lane four. Who's in lane four here? Lane four, Kevin Gu. And in lane six. Holly Burns. So the 200 freestyle, we've got eight lane, eight laps of the pool for the 200 free. A grueling a grueling race as it is. So they turn for the first 50. In lane two, that's Tyler Holbrow. Being closely followed by Norton Swimmer in lane three. And then in the center of pool, who's that in the center of the pool in lane? Kevin Goo. Kevin Goo. Yeah. Well, unless Kevin Goo's wearing a girl's bathing suit, that's not Kevin's Go Kevin Goo. So we may have, let me see, we may have, uh, oh, that's Alyssa Fisher, there we oh, go. Oh yeah, sorry. So Tyler, Alyssa Fisher, and Yiming Fang, there we go. Alyssa the Fish, a 200 and 500 specialist. So the Norton Swimmer taking a slight lead after the first 100. We're halfway through. Whole Brow and Fisher hanging in there. Norton Lancers, the Hillers against the Lancers. This is a league meet, Tri-Valley League. Norton enters this meet winless. Hopkinton sitting in second place in Tri-Valley with a two and one record. They're only lost this year to Ashland. We do have a watch on this. So we'll get an idea of what our time is. Fisher starting to take over here at the three-quarter point. Last turn. So that's Holbrow in lane two, Fisher in lane four, and up top in lane six. That is Yiming Fang.
This one's going to come down to the final 25. The final turn coming in. That's Fisher in the, mid in the middle. List the fish. And Tyler Holbrow. Fisher. Holbrow. Looks like it's going to be 1 2 for Hopkinton. Holbrow touches her out at the end on official time, roughly a 2.05. Norton takes third. We still have three swimmers in the water, making her last turn up top, Yiming Fang. Yiming Fang, the sophomore swimmer, finishing up her 200. We'll get a clock on her, actually. First time I think she swam this this year. Fang comes in at a... Oh, we missed that one. About a 2.39. So if we're a little bit dis disoriented here, we were struggling because we couldn't hear through the headsets. So we're trying to figure out whether or not you could hear us. So if there's a little bit of chatter at the beginning of this broadcast, once again, Kevin Legassi with Eve Weatherhead and Raj Rajan again on the camera. So, Eve, you are in eighth grade, correct? Yep. Excellent. Now, are you an aspiring swimmer as well or diver, or what are the sports that you play? Yeah, next year I'm looking to be on the team with my sister. Fantastic. Do you swim at all during the off season, or are you swimming now for the Raiders or something like that, or are you just going to get in the pool? and? I swam when I was much younger, but diving is usually How could you be now? much younger? You're in eighth grade. What are you, like 15 <laughs> years old, 14 years old, much younger? You sound like it was a long, long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> How about diving? Are you a diver like your sister, or are you going to swim? Yeah, we're both on – I mean, we do club diving besides diving here, and I already know the Coach Jim. Fantastic. So. Coach Jim, glad you brought him up sitting across. I don't know if you get him a shot. Roger, get him a shot across the way. So this is um, – we're going into the 200 IM, uh, unless we may have a second heat of the 200 freestyle. Let's see what they start out with. Up, it looks like we are going into the 200 IM. Who do we have in lane two for Hopkinton for the Sophia two IM? Luce, right? Sophia Luce, right? And then who we have in the center? Kevin Gu and then Holly Burns in lane six. There you go. So Kevin Gu out front there in the center. Closest to us again is Sophie Luce. Yep. And then up top is Holly Burns. Holly Burns. So Kevin Gu Sophomore swimmer, flips into the backstroke. Closest to us, once again, is Sophia Luce. Holly Burns just flipped into hers. Holly Burns flipping into the backstroke. So the 200 IM, 50 yards each of butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and then freestyle. Take swimmers that have disciplines of all, all four of the strokes. Kevin Gu expanding his lead in lane four. Followed closely by Sophia Luce. Holly Burns has picked up some space on the backstroke as Gu turns to the breaststroke. Holly Burns now has moved herself into third place. One of the things that Hopkinton always has is numbers. Raj, I don't know when we get to the end of the pool there as Kevin Gu is going to turn his breaststroke. You can see the hillers lined up. A lot of numbers. I think they're roughly 45 to 50 strong this year, 40 strong. Holly Burns just under hers, and Sophia Luce is right up, and Kevin Gu is on his last top, I believe. There you go. We did not get a watch on this. I was not paying attention, so we won't <laughs> have an unofficial time. So the Hillers this year are led by senior captains. On the men's side, Andrew DeLeva, Alex Matsukas, and on the women's side, Allison Fu, the food fighter, Kate Legassi, and Caleb Can. Five seniors making up the captains. As Gu turns into his last 50. Sophia Luce, closest to us in the camera, takes her turn. And up top, that's Holly Burns. She's opened up a lead and has taken over a commanding lead in third place as well as Gu comes in for the win. Hopkinton looking strong here in the early early portions of the meet. To recap the beginning of the meet, which you had video but no audio for. Hopkinton took first and second, one, two, in the two medley relay. And then we jumped right into 
the 200 freestyle, which we were actually able to announce. So Goo comes in, Loose comes in, and up top, that's Holly Burns. So a little bit about this year's team. The senior group now on their third head coach. Hopkinton welcomes new head coach Kristen Weber, 2016 graduate of Holy of uh, Boston College. I got Holy Cross in the mind. Boston College. So Weber swam at Boston College. She's a 200 freestyler. She is the rookie coach for the Hillers this year, joining last year's head coach, now assistant coach Jeff Libby. Jeff is getting married to his bride Colleen later on this year and has accepted a position as a firefighter for the town of Natick, I believe. So Jeff will be leaving the team at some point, could not take on head coaching. I think in June is when he actually starts. So he's going to offer his assistance this year. And longtime assistant coach Karen Terry on the sidelines as well. For the Hillers, Karen had promised that she would stay with the team until our daughter Katie graduated. And that's this year. So Karen is free to roam after this. She becomes a free agent. So a little bit as we catch up on the team and we go into the next race, which is Eve. Here's the 53 with Cassie White in lane two. Lane four, we have Tyler Fallon. And then in lane six, we have Lee Patrick. Tyler Fallon, sophomore, good swimmer in the center of the pool. Norton giving him a chase. Fallon pushing hard at the end. Fallon, Norton. Ooh, that looks like a tie. Norton looks like they took third for sure, closest to us. That was White taking fourth up top. That's Hopkinton taking fifth. Who was that in lane six? Lane six, we have Lee Patrick. That's right, as she, as she took fifth. Patrick is, as we're catching up with the team here, Lee Patrick, let's find out where she is, sophomore swimmer. And Tyler Fallon also a sophomore swimmer. Is that Fallon in there? Yeah, okay. Tyler Fallon. And then who was in the center there? We have Cassie White. Cassie two. White. Cassie White also, uh, Cassie White Jr. We do have a heat number two. Heat number two in the 53. We have um, Kyla McCain, Maggie McCarthy, and then Connor uh, Wildeson. So it looks like we've dropped one of the swimmers from Hopkinton in the center of the pool. So we've got Kayla McCann and up top in lean. Six. Six. We have Connor. And yep. we dropped Maggie McCarthy. So we do have a watch on this one. We'll see what we can get for a time. Second heat's unofficial, so it won't count towards the scoring, but it will count from a time perspective. All the swimmers are trying to get the best times coming in at a 2797 up top. That is unofficial. Connor finished and Kyla finished, I believe, second. So Kayla McCann takes second coming in as well. Kayla, senior captain. So the Hillers right now, as we were starting to say, come into this meet two to one, uh, two and one in the league. Um, they had a, they swim the Tri Valley as co-ed. Uh, so you're going to see mixed heats with both men and women. The last meet, uh, which was an away meet at Wayland, it was a tri meet with Waltham and Wayland. That was actually uh, both women and men swimming separately as we were going to prep here for the diving. And we'll take a quick break in a minute as we just sort of wrap up and tell you where the team is thus far. Um, Hopkinton gave Wayland a run for the money. The boys lost by, I believe it was six points, 83 to, or 85 to 79. And the girls lost by about six as well. I believe it was 89 to 83. Uh, good showings. Hopkinton looked really good in the pool the other day, um, as they have this year. Ashland came in as the TVL championship from uh, TBL champions from last year, in the regular uh, the regular meets. And uh, Hopkinton gave them a run for money. They lost by about 12 points. They actually had a chance coming into the end of the meet. Um, really came down to the 400 free relay. A lot of depth in the Ashland team. Uh, looks like they are potentials to repeat again this year in the Tri-Valley. So Hopkinton two and one. They are currently tied with Westwood, who is also two and one. Um, 
So we will see Westwood a little bit later on in the season. This, as I said, once again against the Norton Lancers. Norton comes in without a win yet in the Tri-Valley League. They're 0-3. Uh, but you'll see their kids swim with a lot of heart. They have a small team, which is tough. You're going to see a lot of depth in the Hopkinson team today. So the divers are going to prep for the diving. What we're going to end up doing is we'll take a break real quick. We'll take a break as they get prepped for the diving, and then we're going to join you back, fill you in a little bit more in the team, and then uh, now's a good time. If you want to run out and get something to eat, we'll be back a little bit as the divers are warming up. In a couple of minutes, we're going to be back for the divers. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen driver surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving because if you do it, your child will too. All right, we are back back for the diving. So the beauty of this is going to be with Eve being up here with us on the announcing side. So Eve is a diver as well. So she's going to be able to help us out a little bit with some insights in the diving. So you have to listen to me all the time. <laughs> See if we can figure out. There we go. So it looks like tonight we're just going to have two divers. An inward dive. That's a, I can't remember the degree of difficulty for that one, but this one, she's going in towards the board, and this dive is especially hard because you have to jump higher up to get farther away from the board, actually. So Juliana Lucas with her first dive. Not too bad. A little bit over with her legs, dragging it back, but at least she didn't arch because that hurts going into the water. Very nice. Juliana's first dive in the books. Just two divers tonight. Tess is also committing an inward dive. Now, usually she does a tuck dive, but Pike, I think she's pretty good at it as well because it's a much easier coming out into the water. Oh, really nice looking dive. That should be a six and a half, seven, seven and a half, easy. There you go. This one she was a little bit shorter on, but it was pretty good in the entry. So Nick Capalis, who normally dives, is going to take a break because Norton doesn't counter with any dives, divers. So Hopkin will, Hopkinton unchallenged as Juliana goes to her next dive. I missed what it was. Did you hear what it was? It was a 4013, which is an inward one and a half uh, tuck. Oh, really nice looking dive. This one is especially hard because usually you go short on the entry and it's hard to come back from that. But this one she did pretty well on. Well rewarded, seven, six and a half, seven. So it looks like the girls are mimicking each other's dives. You should be able to see <laughs> sort of two, two styles of the diving. short on the entry it looked like. This one she piked out early but managed to go in through the water by doing a pike save underwater which is pretty well. Judges didn't take too much off again six and a half and sevens. Nice looking dive by Tess. She's having a good season so far so is Juliana. Both diving very well. She's doing a double, and you have to jump really high for this dive because that's two flips into the water, and it really hurts on the entry right there. Looks like she might have come out of that just a little bit early. Six and five and a half. You can see animated Coach Brainerd. You know what it's like dealing with Coach Brainerd. He's a, sort of the guru of diving here in Massachusetts. <laughs> looking dive as well. This one she came out a bit early but she managed to arch a little bit which made her entry look a little bit nicer. I was imagine where. Yeah, 
Yeah, looks like seven, seven and a half. So talk to me a little bit about when Tess comes up to the board, how difficult it is to to jump that many times on the board to try to get that 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 flex on the board. She she just doesn't take one or two steps and bounce at the end. She takes multiple. How difficult is that? Well, there are two different kinds of hurdles. There's the just the normal hurdle, I guess, and then there's the hoppy hurdle. My sister does the hoppy hurdle, which gets you a little bit more height than the normal hurdle, but the normal hurdle is, I guess, a bit more coordinated than the hoppy hurdle, but that one definitely gets you a lot more height. Layout position for a back one. Nice, nice dive by Julianne, six and a half and sixes. That one's especially good for getting ready to do back twisters because you need a layout to get ready to do whatever twist you're trying to do. So that's called a hoppy hurdle, huh? I never knew that. That's two and a half. A little bit early on the entry, but still good because she managed to fight safe under the water. Nice scores, eight, seven, and seven. There was a meet earlier in the year where I thought ten, Tess actually had a 10 and should have had a 10. She had a, a 9 and a couple of 8s. Um, she looked really good. Just a wonderful dive. Very graceful when she enters the water. Julianne, the same thing. So Nick is going to take a break tonight. Nick Capalis, he's the third diver. And just as you said, there it was, the there layout is, that you yeah. talked about with the half twist. She is very straight on that, but her twister is a little bit slow, which made her go a little bit to the side, but still got pretty good scores. Oh, it's really nice having the insight because I'll tell you, for the last three years or four years, and I've been announcing for a long time, I just kind of make it up. So <laughs> I don't really know a whole lot about diving, so I just kind of make it up. But I get the scores pretty accurately. Like, that's going to be a six and a half in my book. Back and a half. Tess does pretty well with that, but she does come out a little bit too early, so she has to arch to get the entry in. But thank God that it's easier to go in the water when we know how to save them. Yeah, that's probably a talent that you end up learning is if you, as a diver, is uh, if a dive is not going bad, but if you, if you, uh, uh, technical side is uh, throwing the dive off a little bit, how to recover. That's a reverse flip. She came out a little bit early, but she was leaning forward to make that splash happen, but it was still pretty good getting around. Good score, six and a half, seven sevens. Judges her. In a good holiday mood thus far. It was a pretty good rear slip, but she didn't open up early enough, which made her go over. But that dive usually ends up being short, so thank God she didn't smack on that one. Incredible height. That's going to conclude the diving. Both divers look really good. We'll see what the final scores are as they come out. We're going to take a quick break. As the swimmers warm up, uh, we'll get ready to rejoin the meet after diving, starting off with the 100 fly. So we're going to cut back for a few minutes while the divers while they, uh, get the pool pulled back together again. Take a quick break, and we will be back with more swimming just in a moment. My name is Connor. My name is Nina. A gun. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love each camp. And I love Camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Woo! We're back. I ran away for a minute to go check on the Texans Bills game. We got a, a good one today and wild card weekend. Bills are surprising the Texans right now with a 10 0 lead. <laughs> Bills looking for their first playoff win since 1995. 
It's a little bit of a football interjection as we get ready for the next event, which is? The, I believe it is the. Underfly? After yep, diving? My bad, yep. Sorry. Underfly. Who do we got? What's our lineup look like, Eve, for the 100 fly? I don't think I can pronounce them so All right, I'll get you. <laughs> we'll see if we can get a, uh, a watch on this as well. So in lane one, that's a teacher uh, in the center of the pool. Oh, nope. Oh, there he is. That's Ritesh Rajanigan and out far. That's Alyssa Fisher, the fish. Dicha did out to a quick start. 100 fly, four laps of butterflies. They take the first turn coming back at us. Closest to us, that's Duda. And then the center of the pool was Janigan. Up top, looking strong, is Alyssa Fisher. Having a good meet tonight so far. They take the turn at about a 28. Center of the pool, once again, that's Janigan. Ritesh Janigan, senior. And then Aditya Duda. And then Alyssa Fisher. So right now, Rajanigan's taking a slight lead in the center of the pool. And Aditya Duda, <coughs> the junior, right behind him. Norton Swimmer trying to close on Duda. Duda's holding her off for second place. Looks like Rajanigan's going to cruise to an easy first. Duda's going to be second. And up top, looking really good. That is Alyssa Fisher. We'll get an official time on her, 107.94. Uh, center of the pool, the boys came in somewhere around the 103, 104 mark. Again, all unofficial. One more Norton swimmer finishing up in the center of the pool, up top in lane five. We're going to move ourselves into the next event after the 100 fly. What do we got, Eve? We have Alexa. What's uh, the event? We have the 100 free. 100 freestyle. We have Alexa Matiscos, right? Yep, we have Alex Matsukas. I know the good part is I've been announcing these names for the last <laughs> yeah, three years. I have so no idea. That's okay. Alex Matsukas, uh, Aiden McDonald, and Mary Lauren Burke. ML Burke, also a senior. This year the boys will graduate Fletcher Clark, Fletch the Catch, Andrew DeLever. We call him Andy. His mom doesn't like that, but we call him Andy anyways. <laughs> Alex Matsukas and Ristash Rajanigan, so senior boys. And on the girls' side, M.L. Burke, Allison Fu, Kate Legassi, and Kayla McCann. You know what they say about Allison Fu. You can't spell fun without F.U. The Foo Fighter, Allison Fu. True. All about fun. Let's see if we can get a watch on this. Hunter Freestyle. This is a sprint four laps of the pool. <clears throat> Hopkinton Swimmers, who's that in the center of the pool? Oh, that's Aiden McDonald. Yep. And then closest to us is Alex Matsukas, and up top is on the women's side. Mary Lauren. Mary Lauren Burke. Matsukas in the center of the pool, or Aiden McDonald, rather, in the center of the pool, turns at about 25 and change. Matsukas trailing right behind him in second place, being challenged in lane three by Norton, and up top, that's ML Burke. Moving up in fourth position, trying to challenge for third. They take their last turn. We'll get some unofficial times as they come in. Alex Matsukas. Aiden McDonald in the center of the pool. He's going to win it going away with 53 and change. Matsukas comes in 55, followed by Norton. And up top, we will get a time for Mary Lauren Burke. From a Burke at a 1 double 0 38. Good swims all around by the swimmers. Abe McDonald, a nice pickup this year. This is his first year. He's a sophomore. He's been a nice addition to the team. Good, solid swimmer. Matsukas, senior captain. He is a good sprint freestyler as well as a phenomenal breaststroker. The boys chasing some records. The record for the 100 freestyle set back in 2012 of 48-19. That record's been around for a few years. The record board's been standing pretty steady on the boys' side <clears throat> since roughly 2010, 2012. The oldest of the records still going back to 2005. Coach Karen Terry's son, Sean Terry, holds the school record at 59-88 for the 100 breaststroke. The rest of the records are 2010, 2012 records with one uh, 
in uh, 2015, the diving records were rewritten. On the girls' side, the leaderboard and the record board for Hopkinton High School was rewritten in 2017, 2018. Thank you much to Andrea Way, Victoria Fang, and a few others. Alyssa Annenberg, Maddie Strauss rewrote the diving records. I'm sure Tess has her eyes set on setting some records if she could as well. One of our one of our old divers on our club team was actually a uh, Hopkinton diver, and she broke one of the records. Who was that? Uh, was that Maddie Stouse, or was it Alyssa Annenberg? Yeah, it was Ian. Alyssa? Yeah. Yep. She went on to dive in college, I believe. She went to Connecticut College, or not, uh, University of Connecticut. Yep. So we got a second heat here. We um, have Sean Haley, Mia Carboni, and Declan Hanscom. So again, another heat, heat number two. Heat number two is not going to count for the scoring tonight. However, these swimmers are out there trying to put personal bests out and also to see if they can qualify for both states and sectionals. Qualifying times are floating around here somewhere. We don't know exactly what they are. As we take our first turn in lane two, closest to us, who's that? Closest to us is Sean Haley. Sean Haley. And then center of the pool. We have Mia Carboni. And up top we have in lane six. Declan, Declan Hanscom. Declan Hanscom, a freshman. Sean Haley is a sophomore and Mia Carboni is a junior. So a good looking swim by the sophomore. Sean Haley here in lane two. And up top finishing strong. Declan is. Declan. And then Mia Carboni is. Mia Carboni in the center of the pool. We're gonna get ready for the 500, I believe. Unless they're running, yep, we're going into the 500. So for uh, Hopkinton, Kate Legassi in lane two, Andy DeLeva in lane three. Ooh, and brother Ryan DeLeva out in lane <laughs> six. Coach doing a little throwdown with the brothers DeLeva. Congratulations to Andrew DeLeva on his Eagle Scout accomplishment. Nice event last night, which I unfortunately could not make. I ran into some meetings late, so my apologies to the DeLeva family. But our congratulations to Andrew, Eagle Scout Andrew. One of, I believe, four or five this year in troop number one. Uh, pretty incredible accomplishment. I was looking through the brochure last night on the Eagle Scouts, dating back to 1957 in Hopkinton. We'll get a watch on this one. We got a little bit of time. We can actually chat, Ket, or uh, Eve, and catch mm -hmm. up. It seems we only have one Norton swimmer in this one. We do. Lane two, one Norton swimmer as Hopkinton puts three swimmers across. It's going to be fun to watch the rivalry between senior Andrew DeLeva and sophomore, I believe, Ryan DeLeva. Yep, he's a sophomore. Andrew DeLeva out to a, an early lead in the center of the pool, followed by Kate Legassi and then Ryan DeLeva. Norton picking up in fourth place as well. Take the first turn at roughly 38. 33 and change, rather. Now it seems Andrew's taking a great lead with uh, Kate right behind him. We'll have to see what Ryan does to try to challenge his older brother. I love it when the coaches do that. Last year we had the brothers Holbrow, Zach, senior captain, swimming against his sophomore brother at the time, Tyler. It was fun to watch. A couple of 500 races that got pretty intense. Kate takes her turn. So this is a 20 lap race. This is gonna take roughly six to seven minutes. So it's a good time if you want, go get a sandwich, <laughs> take a break. Hopkinton's pretty pretty close right now, all three swimming as Kate and Ryan DeLeva take their turn up at the top of the pool. Andrew DeLeva in the center of the pool. Andy's got a nice lead. Most of the 500 freeze, it's mostly about the beginning because once you put your place at the beginning, and then you kind of pace yourself during it. You know, it's kind of just where you are for the rest of it. Still not anything I would want it to ever. <laughs> the longest race in the high school swimming is the 500 free, the 20 laps. Probably the most grueling race. A lot of endurance. Hopkinton's record on the men's side for the 500 freestyle set back in 2012, 4.56 and change. 
on the girls' side. That goes back all the way to 2003, Megan Farrell. That still stands, 505. 30, Megan Farrell was also a junior Olympics swimmer, so that 505 might be around for a little while. Talented young swimmer. Seems like Andrew's in the lead. Andrews. Ryan is just a little bit um, in front of Kate, but Kate seems to be catching up near that now. They take the turn after the 200. They're going to turn here at about the halfway point. We'll get a, a look at, quick look at the watch as Andrew Lover does, open up his lead a little bit. He's got about a half a length lead on teammates Ryan DeLeva and Kate Legassi. He's going to turn it right around 257. Nice swim right now. Let's adjust south a six minute pace. If he can hang on to that pace. Ryan DeLeva is going to turn at a 308 and change. Kate Legassi is going to turn at around a 311. So good paces by all three swimmers right now. Ryan DeLeva opening up, or Andy, uh, Andrew DeLeva opening up, rather. I like to call him Andy. His mom really doesn't like him when I call him Andy. <laughs> but that's okay. The whole idea of announcing is you got to come up with a nickname for everybody. Yeah. So does uh, Tess have a nickname? Well, some some of them call her Tesca. Tes <laughs> the high school what, team. Tesca? Tesca. Interesting. I don't exactly know where they got that. It's okay. My mother's name is Jessica. And then uh, Jack Brennan last year thought that Tess was a nickname. Ah. So he thought Tesca was her real <laughs> name. So eventually they just started calling her that. I like that. There you go. It's always good to have a few nicknames. Now, having... having Kate is the last of the Legacy clan going through Hopkinton, so there have been some older ones that have gone through. So having been announcing for a while, I've gotten to know some of the kids over the years and their earlier years where we had some pretty good There's lots pretty of weird good nicknames. nicknames that go around. Yep. What always comes to mind, we had this one swimmer, Spencer Franklin. We used to call him 50 Spence, 50 Spence. Uh. Yep, so we have a few. Andrew DeLeva opening up in the center of the pool a little bit. He's got a lap lead. Ryan DeLeva's opened up on Kate Legassi. Kate's got to pull it up just a little bit. Stay with the pace. Andrew DeLeva turning on lap number 16. Ryan DeLeva's up top. Looks pretty good. He's moved himself in second place. Kate picking it up right now in third place, trying to push. So it looks like the DeLeva the DeLeva brothers' challenge is not going to be quite what I thought is Andy's squashing his younger brother, Ryan, right now. <laughs> Ryan, I apologize for saying you're getting squashed, but that's okay. Well, he's older. He's older by two years, right? Two years, yeah. yes. So he's had two more, two more experience. Taking his last turn, 50 left as he turns into 523. Andrew DeLeva sprinting now towards the end. Ryan DeLeva up top, he's going to turn for his last 50. And then Kate Legassi's got one more lap to turn. Ryan DeLeva's turning, he's going to turn at 539. Norton Swimmer in the center of the pool, she's holding on to fourth. Andrew making the final stretch. This will be an unofficial time, we'll keep the watch running right now as they come in. So we can get sort of a time on all three of the swimmers. Andrew Leva coming in. He's going to be just south of six minutes at a 5.56 and change. Kate Andrew. Legassi takes her last turn. I guess Ryan just turned to his last lap, and he's making the final stretch. Nice push back in. It's nice to see these kids sprint at the end of this race. It's grueling. They've been swimming for six and a half minutes. Ryan's coming in. He's going to come in at a 6.16 and change. Nice swim by Ryan DeLeva. Yeah, like I said, it's mostly at the beginning part because if you really stretch at the beginning part and then pace the rest of the race, it's really about where you're placed, you know? Yeah. I always struggle with swimming because it's one of those things, if you start getting tired and winded, you're in, your head's in water. It's not like running where you can breathe the air freely as Kate Legassi comes in. She's yeah. going to come in at a 6.43. Nice swim by Kate Legassi. Norton Swimmer still has a couple of laps left. A little counting mishap at the end. Counter lost track up there. Had to bar another counter. She's coming in. She's going to be a little over seven minutes. So as I said earlier, Hopkinton 
the senior group of Hopkinton swimmers. This is the third head coach in their four-year career. They really kind of weathered it well. If you're going to have three coaches, this is the team to do it to. These, these senior captains have been really good. They started the freshman year with former coach Brian King. Then Jeff Libby took over. He had been an assistant coach, was head coach for two years, and actually coach of the year his inaugural year, his freshman year, which was two years ago. Jeff, as I said, is taking a job and is going to firefighter school. So he recognized that he was not going to be able to keep up. So he has turned over the reins to Kristen, Kristen Weber, a 2016 graduate from Boston College, swimmer over BC. It's interesting, just talking a little bit to the swimmers, there's been a noticeable difference, I think. Not noticeable, but a little bit of a difference in the intensity of some of the practices as Weber has worked them hard over the holidays, as she should. It's a good time for them to get some good swims in. They have some time in between some meets. But I think that's good. They've, they've continued to add the dry land components as well. We're going to get ready for the next event, which is the 200 free relay. All right, these are really difficult to announce because you got 12 swimmers you're going to be talking about. So yeah. this is going to challenge you. We first got Taylor Holbro, uh, Blake Briner, and then uh, Alex Matsukas. Matsukas, thank you. So Briner, Holbrook, Matsukas in the center of the pool. That's Briner up top. That is Matsukas, and closest to us, that is Tyler Holbrow. Four swimmers straight across the pool as Norton's challenging. Center of the pool. That is Blake Briner. He's going to hand it off to, we've got Fu closest to us. Sophia Luce in the center of the pool and Yiming Fang up top. Again, four swimmers straight across right now as this race is pretty close. Female swimmers in the pool running co ed relays men and women in the same heats and in the same races center of the pool that's hopkinton sophia loose she turns it over to aditya duda leah patrick closest to us and shailene patel up top i think shailene shalin shalin patel I apologize, I'll put you in his name in the center of the pool. That's Aditya Dutta. Opening up a lead for Hopkinton in lane four. He hands off to Tyler Fallon. Patrick's gonna turn over to Kevin Goo and up top, nice swim. Nice swim by Shallon Patel to Sean Haley. Haley charging hard. He's not gonna catch the center of the pool. That's Tyler Fallon. Goo's trying hard to hold on to second. Looks like he will, but he's being challenged closely by Norton. Norton, we've got a race here for second. Goo is going to hold on. And up top, Sean Haley does a really nice job pulling the, that third Hopkinton relay in. Now, the interesting thing about the scoring, so for the scoring, if you're trying to score at home in the individual races, it is uh, six points for first, then four, three, two, one. The first five places score and in the relays it is 8-4-2 so Hopkinton taking first and second those are really tough um, when you sweep relays that's a really tough point score to overcome picking up 12 points to Norton's two you can sweep the relays which is doesn't happen very often Hopkinton Sean Haley was trying to do that. Uh, Norton held on as they were trying to challenge for second place. So swimmers swim down a little bit. Looks like we are going to have a second heat. So we def we're going to have a definite uh, heat number two. In lane one, it's going to be Olivia J, followed by Connor. Uh, Willardson, Maggie McCarthy, and Declan Hanscom. And in the center, it's going to be Fletcher Clark, Fletch the Catch, Holly Burns, Renita Gula, and Wyatt Ruff. And then uh, Citrali Samant, Kuthert Pamar, Leotina Keptic, and Gabe O'Brien. So right now in the pool, it's Jay Clark and Samant. Center pool, that is Fletcher Clark. A lot of new faces this year. 
this team is really buoyed by or, or driven by the sophomore class. A lot of swimmers in the sophomore class. It's Clark turning it over to Holly Burns. Now in the pool closest to us, it's Connor Willardson. And up top, it's Pamar. Kutar Pernar. A lot of freshmen are going to see some swimming time tonight. As Norton doesn't have as many swimmers, so Hopkinton's going to take the opportunity to put some people in. Coach Weber has promised us we'll get home. We usually don't have playoff football for the Patriots, but we do have a game tonight. Third swimmer's in. That's Thadikutla in the center of the pool. McCarthy closest to us. And Keptik going into the pool. All these kids have to apologize if we mangle their names. It's the first meet we've announced this year. We had some technical difficulties getting this one off the ground. We finally got ourselves situated. So at the beginning of the race, the meet is going to be a little bit of us trying to figure out whether or not it was working, which is kind of fun. So final swimmers getting right ahead in the water. That's going to be in the center of the pool. Wyatt Ruff and Declan Hanscom. And up top, it's Gabe O'Brien. Nice swims by Maggie McCarthy, Irina Thetakutla, and uh, Leontina Kepik, Kepik. Center of the pool, Wyatt Ruff. Sounds like a name from the past, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Like he should be a gunslinger. Wyatt Ruff. Wyatt Ruff. Jacqueline Hanscom closest to us and Gabe O'Brien. Nice swims. You can kind of see the numbers if you look through Hopkinton, like I said, roughly 40 swimmers. We'll get a, an exact count in a little while. So we get ready for our next event, Eve. What's that going to be? Good. Next event, we're going to have the 100 back, starting with Ryan uh, Dieva, right? And Deleva. Then, uh, Blake Briner. Briner. Briner, sorry. And then Kayla McCain. So it's roughly uh, 21 on the girls' side, 22 on the men's side, so 43 swimmers. Norton, I think, is probably fielding a team of about 15 or 20, so Hopkinton's definitely got numbers. That really comes to be when we get to the league meet at the very end. Even though the league meet does not determine the league champion, the champion is uh, crowned based on the head-to-head -head meets, but the league championship meet, which is all the teams coming together here at Keefe Tech, is really about bragging rights. Hopkinton <laughs> took Ashland out to the tool shed last year and beat him handily uh, at that meet after having lost the TVL championship. Hopkinton has been TVL champions for several years, and Ashland regained that crown last year. So 100 backstroke. Who do we got going? In a Ryan. Ryan DeLeva. Ryan DeLeva. And then Center of the pool. Blake. We got Blake Reiner. And then up top. Kayla McCain. Blake Briner opened up a nice lead in the center of the pool, followed closely by Ryan DeLeva, challenged in the center of the pool, also in lane three by Norton, up top. Who's that up top again? Kayla McCain. Kayla McCain. Kayla's starting to catch up to Ryan as uh, Blake Briner turns over into the other lap. 100 back is four laps. Briner's going into his last turn at the 75. Ryan Dilev has got about a half a body length feet. It's going to be a race for second place. With Kayla McCann up top trying to press a little bit. She's catching up and closing the gap on the third position. See if she can move herself in. Blake Briner coming in. We did not get a watch on this. I had started it for the relays. So Briner did not do seven minutes and 58 seconds. That's not what he did. Probably somewhere close to a minute. DeLeva opens up to a body and a half. Nice swim by Ryan DeLeva, good hustle. Norton takes third, and up top, Captain Kayla McCann. Captain Kayla, I like that, I like the way that sounds. Briner, I believe, took second. Um, nope, sorry, that was Briner, the Briner first. won, yep, yeah. Briner won, and Ryan DeLeva, DeLeva took was second. second. Yep. And then Kayla McCain was third, or fourth, and then, yeah. 
So next year, you said your aspirations are to try out for the team? Yeah. Excellent. Diving and swimming or just diving, you think? Uh, just, diving. just diving. Sometimes I think Tess swims, but she can't this year because her uh, shoulder. Yeah. Definitely the swimming part of it takes its toll on your shoulders. Shoulders <laughs> and uh, uh, it's really just shoulders and back. And knees aren't really affected that much because it's all straight leg. As we go into the next race, what do we got coming up as we're winding down the 100 backstroke? Oh, we've got a heat number two. Actually, it looks like we get a heat number two and maybe a heat number three. Oh, no, we get an all Hopkinton. Okay, so here we go. Coach has got this down. This is pretty good. So we get a heat number two. It's all Hopkinton. Gabe O'Brien in lane number one. Ishta Karana in lane number two. Olivia J in lane number three. Fletch Clark in lane number four. Chatrell Samant in lane number five. And Ayababa, Ayababa, Ayababa in lane at number six. It is all Hopkinton here showing those numbers as everybody's out trying to get some times in the center of the pool. That's Fletcher Clark, senior flex the catch. See how Fletch holds up as they turn the first 25. Lane one, once again, closest to us, it's Gabe O'Brien. Lane two, Ishta Karana. Lane three, Olivia J. Fletcher Clark in lane four. Shea Trow Samant up in lane five. Being challenged lane two, a nice swim being turned in right now by Ishta Karana. Karana taking the lead, followed closely in lane one by Gabe O'Brien and in lane three by Fletcher Clark, or lane four rather. Olivia J starting to press Fletcher Clark a little bit. Ayababa up top in lane six and Shea Trow Samant. In lane five, last turn coming into the 100. Center of the pool, good looking swim being turned in by Ishta Karana. Ishta, freshman swimmer, new to the team this year. She's going to win this heat. Nice looking swim by Ishta. That's Gabe O'Brien closest to us. Fletch Clark, Olivia J. And it's going to be Shaytrell Samant and Ayababa up in lane six as we get ready for the 100 breaststroke. So just two events left here tonight. We have Allison Fu. The Fu fighter. <laughs> um, Alex uh, Montesca, right? Matsukis. Matsukis, I my know, bad. It took me a long time to get his name down. <laughs> and who uh, else we got? Oh, Deidre Belger. Yep. So we get a quick, uh, still 10 nothing bills, just for those who want to know. If you're not watching, <laughs> if you're not watching Hopkinson swimming, you're watching football. Now the coaches were nice enough; they told us they would get us out of here fast enough. We don't usually have to rush on a weekend when it's wild card weekend because the Patriots generally aren't playing on wild card weekend. But of course they. Did not do as well against the Miami Dolphins last week. We won't talk about that, but they are playing on wild card weekend. So at 8 o'clock tonight, 8.15 tonight, Patriots will take on the uh, Tennessee Titans. I can't believe they lost to the, the Dolphins, Lost to right? the Dolphins, yeah. I know. Pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> A four-win team came in and beat them. That was not, was not pretty. So this is the 100 bear stoke. So Matsukis, the Foo Fighter, and Deidre Belger. Center of pool, that's Matsukis. Like we said, Allison Fu, you can't spell fun without F-U, the Foo Fighter. Matsukis takes off. He's got a good swim going in the center of the pool. They didn't get a clock on this either. Matsukis' times have looked really good earlier this year. So he starts to push himself under sub 105, get himself in the 102, 103, 104 range. All good swims. And the holy grail of breaststrokers when you're a high schooler or college is to break one minute. It's not the easiest thing in the, in the world to do. As a freestyler, you're looking to break a 50. Again, not easy to do. That's Matsukis opening up in the middle of the pool. He's got a two and a half body length lead over Allison Fu. Deidre Belger, she's challenging for third position. This race is going to be about third place. That's where the Action's going to be. So Matsukis opens it up quite a bit. This will be the last individual event as we get ready to the 400 freestyle. Matsukis 
Wire to wire win from Alex Matsukas. So captain, captain tonight, Matsukas and Fu. Belger challenging for third. Let's see what she's got left in the tank. Up top in lane six, Deidre Belger. She's pushing hard. Let's see what she can do. Just going to be touched out at the end by Norton Swimmer. Last view of the, the 400 free lay. Four free, by 100 free free lay, free lay. Yeah. yep. I think we have Merlin Burke, Taylor Fallon, and Andrew DeLeva. There we go. So the coach will mix these up a little bit, and the first swimmers, <coughs> these these uh, times actually will count because it's a hard start, not a relay start. So these are 50 times for these particular swimmers for Mary Lauren Burke, Andrew DeLeva, and who's in the center of the pool? Tyler Fallon. These all count towards their 50 times as well because it's a gun start with a hard finish. I'm sure DeLeva's very <laughs> tired from the... After 500. Yeah, the 500. Yeah, it's a lot to come back. Some of these guys come back. Uh, these swimmers come back, both men and women. They come back and they swim other events. After the 500, that's grueling race, and they come back in and they swim a couple of the race, races. When you see the distance swimmers, sometimes it's the 200 free in addition to the 500 free because they are distance. They tend to be the distance events. So we'll have a little bit of a break. We'll get a score update at the end. The always the interesting thing, and I've seen some new cheers this year. Hopkinton's rolled out a couple of new cheers, so we're going to listen to the end as we watch and hear what the cheers are. A lot of sportsmanship in the TVL League. The teams compete heavily, but they all get along really well. So we always like to hear what the, what the, uh, what the cheers are at the end. You get your potato chip, potato chip. You get your toothpaste. I like crests. Up the pool, down the pool. Hopkinton's done a modification of one this year, something we hadn't heard. They rolled it out, I think, at the second meet. We'll see if they showcase it again tonight. Always fun to hear what the kids come up with. A little bit of time here as we have one of the swimmers from Norton not feeling too well there at the end of the pool. Good time for Raj just to sort of pan around as you look up and down the Hopkinton sidelines on the far side of the pool. 43 swimmers. I had the pleasure of hosting all of them at the house for a spaghetti dinner the other night. I have never seen people eat quite like that before. Unbelievable, these swimmers. They burn some calories and they they replenish very handily. Not a lot of food left after that afternoon. A good group of kids. Last year, we were fortunate enough to host. They had a day after Christmas swim practice at 5.30 in the morning, and they all came back for breakfast. That was actually a lot of fun, too. So... A lot of camaraderie that they've been they've been noted for their school spirit quite a bit, winning the Spirit Award a couple of times. So this is the four by 100 relay, four swimmers each swimming 100 Burke. yards freestyle. Yep, Burke is closest to us. Fallon is already in the lead right there. And DeLeva and uh, Burke are kind of tied right here. But Tyler Fallon is really pushing hard in the middle there. Tyler Fallon looks good in the center of the pool. That's lane four. Be impressed a little bit closest to us. Burke Mary seems Lauren to be Burke. catching up to Fallon a little bit while DeLeva's pushing hard as well in the back there. So as you're looking at the lanes closest to us, is lane number one. The far side of the pool is lane number six. They take the final turn. That's uh, Tyler Fallon. Is that who we got? He's yeah. going to hand off to uh, Kate Legassi. Yeah. Cadle, as she is sometimes referred to. Kate with the last letter L. Now Cassie White has just dove in, and also Mia Carboni. So White, Legassi, and Carboni, three women in the center of the pool. Legassi takes her turn. This is Cassie White. She's starting to pick up a little bit of ground on Kate Legassi. And Mia Carboni up top trying to close the gap between her and second police as well. Kate is going to go off to... Um, Shalyn Patel. Patel. Yep. Yeah, Patel. <laughs> Cassie White closest to us. She's closed down the lead a little bit on Kate Legassi. She's got it down to about a body length. 
as they take the final turn. Kate's got to sprint this one in to hold that lead that she was given by Tyler Fallon. So looks like she will. Cassie White trying to close. And up top, that's Mia Carboni. So Legassi's going to hand off to Patel. We and have Sophie, uh, Sophie Luce. Close to us, who's going to hand off to Alyssa Fisher. And then we have. No, we're going loose to Patel to Aditya Duda. Yep, to Tyler Hallbrow in the back there. So center of the pool right now is Shailen Patel. Closest to us, Sophia Luce, and up top, that is Aditya Duda. Shailen Patel, I believe he is a freshman swimmer. He is. Nice looking swim here by Shailen Patel. Up top, Duda trying to close, and he's moved his relay into second place. And closest to us, Sophia Luce, they're going to turn together. Duda and Luce turning together. Patel, Patel is handing it off to Ritesh Razanigan, senior swimmer. Clean start by Ritesh up top. Duda to Tyler Holbrow. Holbrow is going to try to ch chase down Ritesh Rajan again. I don't know that he's going to catch him. And last in the water closest to us, that's Alyssa Fisher. So strong anchor legs here by Coach Weber. Nice looking stroke in the center of the pool by Ritesh Rajan again. Really clean stroke. He's a butterflyer as well as a freestyler. Up top, Tyler Holbrow, right? Yep. Tyler Holbrow giving chase. And then closest to us, that is Alyssa Fisher, the fish. Also a dog lover, too. She was over at the house just playing with the dogs. <laughs> I think she wanted more to do with the dogs than she did with the kids at the Spagger. What a good kid. I think Holbrow, her last name goes with her sport. I know. Holbrow giving chase. He's not going to catch Rajan again in the center of the pool. Strong swim by both Rajan again and Tyler Holbrow, in addition to Alyssa Fisher as Hopkinton goes one, two, and three in the four by 100. Capping off what has been a spectacular night by the Hillers, beating the Lancers of North Norton. Little outgunned tonight were the Lancers, but they put up a good fight. They looked really strong in the water in a bunch of events. A small team, they come in, they're feisty, they swim really hard. Well coached and really classy group of kids. As the last of the Norton swimmers in the relay is in the water. When the kids go off to championships, they actually do not swim co-ed, so they end up swimming as, a, as uh, both men and women, so when they go to states and sectionals. So they're putting down times. These kids are trying to put down times to qualify for both states and sectionals. There have already been a bunch of swims that have qualified, so a lot of swimmers are already going to be swimming into the postseason as it is. As Norton is wrapping up, final turn for the 4x100. Some high fives in the water in lean two with the girls in the relay. Nice swims. Congratulations to Alyssa Fisher. I like the swim and dive gear this year, that the, the t-shirts that uh, Coach Weber and uh, Coach Libby are both wearing. Really nice looking shirts this year. Hopkinton did a nice job. I think their team captains designed them as Norton comes in to a big round of applause. And this meet is in the record books. Hopkinton should walk away with a pretty sizable win tonight. They did a nice job in the pool. It's what the Patriots didn't do. When you're supposed to beat a team, <laughs> you just go out and beat them. Yeah, we've, we've been to the Super Bowl. Well, a, lot, th a lot. Yeah, three years <laughs> in a row, I think. Yes, <laughs> a lot. The change if we didn't, but I know. it would be nice if we did go again. Hey, we're spoiled rotten right now, but there's a long time when the Patriots just were not good at all. So yeah. it's been fun to watch. So what's your prediction? Is Tom Brady going to stay around for? I don't think he is. I mean, we have um, his niece, I believe, on our team. We have oh, really? Callie Brady. Yeah. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he's going to stick around for much longer because we, we did lose Bronk. There you yeah, go. So, so a little bit of intel. So we've got a nice connection here. Yeah. So it was just announced Hopkinton did, in fact, win the win the meet. We didn't get the score, but oh yes, they yeah. got the requisite 95 points that you needed to win. Yep. So we're going to give it a couple of minutes here. We'll see if we can catch the uh, 
catch the cheers. They don't seem to be gathering yet. I'm not sure if they're going to start shaking hands yet. And it's always great because peanut butter, peanut butter. What did they say? I'm not sure I can quite hear them down there. That was the Norton one. That was. That was something a little bit different. Here comes the Hawkington one. I know. Let's hear oh, what they got. Them. They only have 13 for is that Norton is down for there. Yeah. Let's hear what Hopkinton gives us. There it is. There. That was the one. Swimsuits, swimsuits. They're elastic. We think Norton is fantastic. A new one rolled out by Hopkinton this year. So we really enjoy that as we sign off tonight. The uh, teams tend to spread germs to one another as they walk around and during this cold and flu season they're going to shake everybody's hands and just spread whatever <laughs> yes whatever germ they have they're going to give it to each other while they congratulate one another eve it's been a pleasure thank you very much thank you so much and raj once again thanks for running the camera for us we're gonna wrap up while the teams finish shaking hands of course there are 40 hopkinton swimmers to do it so that's going to take a little bit of time so for uh eve weatherhead Raj Rajanigan and I am Kevin Legassi. We are signing off here at Hopkinton with a win over Norton. Uh, we didn't get the final score, I don't think. Uh, 91 to 67, that's what we're going to call it. It's in the record book. So Fantastic. Hopkinton Hillers beat the, the Lancers of Norton 91 to 67. It is January 4th. We're going to sign off. We will see you at the next meet. And we thank you all for watching.